In today's video, we're going to finish up two amps. So this Vintage Sound uh, Twin uh, Replica Clone, whatever you want to call it, is done. I thought people would like to hear it now that it has a proper B plus for the first time since it was built in 2008. Now that all the diodes are in the right orientation and it sounds like it was supposed to, it sounds like a pretty good, slightly noisy, slightly microphonic twin. So here's the normal channel, which does not have the traditional twin sound. Anyway, the amp sounds incredibly a lot better now that it has a full B+, plus. it's not just half DC and half AC ripple, and uh, it can be biased and everything, and you know all that crazy kooky stuff with, uh, where the electronics actually uh, work properly. So that's enough for that one. Let's move on to the 64 AC30. In the previous video on this amp, you saw that someone had spray painted the entire chassis in this like hammer tone, gold, copper, whatever. And it was all down in the original tube sockets. So I've got new belt and octal, new belt and novel sockets. The octal socket back there has got a belt and bear trap on it. So that rectifier tube is not going anywhere. And I did not put any further tube retainers on the EL84s, both because the aftermarket ones available today very wildly in uh, their quality. A lot of the times it's just something that kind of makes a microphonic noise because it's kind of vibrating loose on the glass. And uh, primarily because these Belton Novel sockets are so tight, there's just not much wiggle room at, at all with the 84s or preamp tubes. In fact, it can be a little bit, a little bit tricky to get some tubes to go into these sockets. Uh, a lot of the uh, Russian tubes barely fit in the... Uh, the base of a preamp Belton due to the diameter of the glass being a little bit larger in some of the Russian stuff. But uh, that's a doesn't come into play here. What matters here now is we have new tube sockets that are mechanically good and electronically good with no paint in them. A radical concept. And on the other side, you can see the new sockets, the new cathode wire going here, a new cathode uh, bypass cap, New screen grids and grid stoppers, some heater balances reference to the um, about 12 volt DC cathode there and the old uh, ground connection on one side of the heaters in the preamp was lifted. So that problem has gone away. And it's got new filter caps in. So here's the 30 for the uh, tremolo channel and here's the dual 16. And as I mentioned before, I always like to remove all the hardware for grounds and really get things clean and redo that properly. And a close up here of the new rectifier socket wiring. A dual eight for the preamps and an additional 30 or 33 or 32, whatever the FNT version is for the top boost. You can see here two of the Wema gold foils are gone. These are the output uh, caps on the phase inverter and uh, they were leaking DC. Uh, their time had come, and it was like one whole volt and 400 millivolts, somewhere in that range. So it's got some new Vichy MK MKT 1813s, which sound fantastic. You know, um, if this amp were in otherwise untouched, you know, mostly original condition, I would contact the owner and say, hey, we can get some new old stock trophy foils uh, from a guy in Germany who puts them on reverb and eBay and all that. But given how much has been changed over the years, I don't think it's worthwhile. You won't hear any difference. It's purely a cosmetic thing. And I've already mentioned in the previous video on this app that a lot of this was just redoing all the mechanical connections so that uh, the two halves of the chassis were making good contact together and everything was clean. You can see the little blue Vichy electrolytics I put in. And uh, per the owner's request, I have rewired the tone stack to the modern clockwise equals more which does give a better balance um, with the taper of the pots. I think it's kind of a historic mistake JMI made. So here's what all that work results in. And I've th this is going into my uh, ET65 loaded cab and with a 57 on it. If I have time to do a real playing video with a real player coming in, I'll 
hook up the Royer and get it all set just perfectly. But uh, it's really nice not to have all that hum this amp used to have. You're hearing now the pickups being close to the transformers. I guess I'll show this old trick. I've shown it in other videos, but you never know which uh, video someone will watch. Channels are out of phase with each other, but they have so much different frequency information that this really turns into your treble and upper mid-range volume. This turns into your bass volume. As you turn them up together, the lower mids kind of cancel out in very nice uh, ways that are kind of friendly to uh, ears that are used to fenders. So it's a nice trick to do with the JMIs and the TBXs, and I can make that happen on the uh, uh, Custom Classic, the Custom, and the... Uh, Handwired, though it's trickier to do on the custom classic and the custom. And let's go real fast just to the vibe trim channel because it's pretty. Oh, and you can do a neat thing on this channel too. Say you wanted to get most of your sound from the top boost channel, just jump her over to the vibe trim and get your core sound going. like uh, you're just you know they're out of phase with each other and all that fun stuff uh, but you don't get big phase cancellation due to the way the whole thing's working but it just it's like you can have your core sound from your brilliant channel also be going to the vibe trim and use a foot switch and turn it on and off because the brilliant channel's got a lot more gain and tonal flexibility than the vibe trim this gives you the best of all possible worlds a little bit of creative jumpering you can do it with ABY pedals. You can even, uh, if you have the right pedal, like a, uh, a radial, you can invert the polarity as necessary for additive gain, subtractive gain, all kinds of fun stuff. They're just really nice amps. And this one is once again, a really nice amp. <laughs> 